get people through. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Ayan Oshkosh. I'm your host, Cheryl Hentz. Uh, very pleased to have you joining us for this segment and for the entire show. But I say segment because we have two different segments in this show. In the first half, I'm very pleased to be joined by Carla Sikaris. She is the membership, she's the marketing and membership coordinator here at the Oshkosh Public Museum in Oshkosh. And um, she's a first time guest on I in Oshkosh, but hopefully this won't be her last visit here. <laughs> so we're very happy to have you here, Carla. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you so much, Cheryl. Sure. We're going to be talking about a number of different things during this segment with Carla. Um, one of the first things we're going to talk about, of course, is just the museum in general, um, you know, what it has to offer and so forth. But we also want to talk about upcoming events, uh, specifically related to the upcoming holiday season and so forth. So um, that's what we'll be doing. And then in the second segment, we'll be talking with two folks from the Oshkosh Public Library, kind of the same thing, things that the library has to offer and upcoming events and activities surrounding the holiday season and start of the new year. So uh, we're glad you're with us as well. So very good. Thanks again for being here, as I said. And let's, let's talk about the museum itself. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of years since I've been there. Um, and um, certainly I would say it's been probably about eight or nine years. It's been a while. It's a long time, yeah. <laughs> and, it, and yet it's a gem in our own backyard. Mm -hmm. And so what kinds of things does the museum have to offer in the way of permanent exhibits? I, I know you always have special exhibits, and yes. certainly we mm -hmm. want to talk about those too. Yeah. But in the way of permanent exhibits, what kinds of things do you have to yeah. offer there? Um, the museum is a regional history museum. So throughout the museum, you will see things that represent the culture and heritage of people um, and just things that happened here in town. Um, so in the historic Sawyer um, home, um, which is the cornerstone of the museum, um, you'll have one room that has um, a lot of different um, ceramics, decorative arts, um, all of which were collected and, and used by um, people here in Oshkosh. Um, we have rotating um, artwork, fine art, in another room. Um, but of course, the, the feature on the first floor is our Apostles' Clock. Um, very rare, monumental clock built in 1895 by a German immigrant, um, Matthias Kitz. And um, to this day, it chimes on the hour every hour, and that is always a, a, a visitor favorite. It is. It's always been, I mean, I'm a native of here, yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, as a younger person, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would take school trips yep, and so yep. forth to the museum. Yeah. And it's always been one of my favorites, too, so yeah. uh, certainly I'm not alone. I know yeah. that, you know, people kind of look at their watches, and as it gets to be close to the hour, yep. they all sort of congregate in that area. Exactly. And for anyone who is not familiar with the Apostles' Clock, you have to go to the museum's website, which is oshkoshmuseum.org, and I know we'll be putting that up throughout the segment, mm -hmm. but it is a huge, it almost looks like a very large grandfather clock mm -hmm. type thing. Yeah. And it has all of the disciples come out mm -hmm. and bow in front of Jesus Christ. Uh, except, except for one. Except for one, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, so it's just, and, and that happens at the top of every hour. Mm -hmm. um, and is it featured on the website where people can, like, watch it a little bit? They can't watch it. We okay. have a picture of it, but okay. um, we don't have a video of it. Okay. We sell a video of it in sure. our, in our um, sure. gift shop, but, um, um, yeah, we just have pictures of it. Okay, so pictures very, very, that very depict, you know, the different uh, disciples coming out, or... Um, they're all out, yes. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, so. Well, it is something definitely to see. So if yeah. you, um, you know, go by the museum um, in the camera, I'm hoping we'll switch back to me here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Um, if you have a chance to get to the museum, mm -hmm. you live locally in the area, please go check it out because that is, as Carla said, um, a visitor favorite. Mm -hmm. And if you live out of the area, this is on YouTube, so you could be almost anywhere in the world, and you want to see it because it is one of a kind, yeah. um, you know, they can 
purchase online, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So yep. there you go. Um, it is really something to see. Yeah. So um, one of the exhibits that I remember is there's, um, it's a kind of a wildlife exhibit and it shows some of the natural wildlife that's indigenous we, to Oshkosh. We did and have Wisconsin. that. Um, that was wetlands and waterways on okay. the first floor. That is the exhibit that we just tore out. Um, okay. It was um, built in 1998. Um, wonderful exhibit. A lot of people loved it, but um, it didn't delve very deep into the, the history of life on the water. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, being it went, uh, was built in 1998, um, like I said, Many of the things that it talked about were um, environmental projects that have long since been finished. Okay. Um, so there sure. were things, a lot of things in that exhibit that were now out of date and sure. have been for a number of years. Um, so we did a series of focus groups with um, residents and um, teachers to find out what do they want in there. And everybody said, 65%, um, I shouldn't say everybody, 65% um, of respondents said um, that it should touch on our regional history and Native American. Mm -hmm. We have uh, an incredible collection of, of Native American um, you know, from points and, and different pottery and sure. artwork, and, and it's just so rich with, with that. And s such a small part of it is out visible. Um, mm -hmm. And so People of the Waters um, is the outcome of that. Um, it's currently under construction, and it will open next September. Um, and it will delve into um, life here from the Ice Age, and how cool. the receding ice then brought people and um, how they lived off of the resources. And it will show just thousands of artifacts out of our collections. Um, it will explore um, the early life. It will explore um, archeology. span How do archeologists dig in the earth sure. and determine what was up above, sure. you know? So it's going to be just very, very educational. And it will end with um, the fur trade. Um, Which and was very big here too. Exactly, but um, mo most people consider fur trade um, European contact, mm -hmm. but Native Americans were trading for thousands of years prior mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. So one of the cool features um, will be a map of the United States, but then um, more North America, mm -hmm. because it goes you know beyond the borders. Sure. And you, we ha will have artifacts on display that we know are from the fur trade. And you push a coordinating button, and it will show you the historic trade route um, sure. that that object oh, traveled. Yeah, yeah, that's really so, neat. So um, there will be an interactive game um, that people can continue through our website. Um, and you can put yourself in the place of a fur trader. Mm -hmm. You choose your character, what mm -hmm. you're going to trade, and you have to go through the steps. You know, okay, if you're trading beaver pelt, what do you need to do? First, you got to go hunting, you know? So it's it's kind of very that series neat. of things. And so, That's very cool. um, you know, especially for students to get, sure. to really put themselves in that position sure. and have a much deeper understanding. Sure. Um, and, you know, same with the Ice Age. Um, we'll have a topographical map that people, again, um, It'll have projections. Um, people will be able to basically push a button and look at the topography from different views in time. Uh -huh. So when we were all covered in ice, and then yep. how did yep. that ice recede, and how did it leave the valleys? And well, in Oshkosh's case, nothing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do have a lake. Yeah. You don't happen <laughs> to have an exhibit. Um, that shows how to avoid snow coming to this area in the winter, do you? No, we're okay. working on that. Okay, As good. you see, you know, <laughs> the warmer Novembers, we're working on that. Yeah, that, yeah, that would yeah. be a good thing to have because, uh, you know, we're in November now, yeah. and but I've heard the winter is supposed to be so bad. So see what yeah. you can do about getting an oh, exhibit yeah, we'll like try. that. Yeah, we'll try. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we'd all be interested in that. Um, okay, now we've got some graphics that we want to show. Yeah. Um, can you tell us um, the first graphic that you want to see and uh, um, what yeah. it's all um, about? 
I'll flip my paper over here a little bit. We do have um, an overview. Of oh, we've got something up now. Oh, um, okay. So let's go with then that. Then we'll go with that. Well, let's let's switch gears and talk <laughs> about events coming up. We're flexible up. here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so Deck the Halls is our annual holiday exhibit, mm -hmm. and we kick that off with the Museum Auxiliary. They host an annual gala. This year it's going to be on Thursday, November 17th, okay. 5.30 to 7.30. Admission is $15, and um, attendees get a sneak peek of Deck the Halls. And what's even better is being at night, because, you know, it gets dark at 5 o'clock now, mm -hmm. um, you will see just the, the, all of the holiday decorations will be that much more beautiful, just shimmer and the entire museum will just be a glow with all the holiday decorations. Sure. Every room on the first floor is decorated um, to represent a historic um, time period from the 1880s to 1910s. Every room is a different decade. Okay. Um, so it kind of, you know, represents the time that the Sawyers lived on the property. Okay. Um, then on the second floor we have our What's this now? Oh, that is something completely different. That <laughs> is uh, not deck the halls, but that is a arch that is going to go up on our front lawn. Okay. Um, so if you drive by on Algoma, you'll notice a lot of work had been done on yes. the front lawn. We have a beautiful that. new pathway um, and, a, and a fountain in the center. Okay. Um, on the corner that faces um, the pane, so it would be Algoma and Congress, mm -hmm. um, there's going to be this beautiful arch and it um, will have the quote um, for the benefit of the public, which is what Edgar Sawyer said when he donated the home to the city mm -hmm. um, in 1922. Um, he, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So this now we're back to People of the Waters. That is one viewpoint you see on the one corner. That is the, the map where you can see how the the landscape changed mm -hmm. um, over time. We're going to have just an incredible um, glass artifact wall um, that will just show an incredible amount of points. A giant beaver really give that perspective of okay, it wasn't dinosaurs, right. but you know there was a much different. Um, that is a viewpoint of um, the travel and trade. Um, so that's the map that you can look at how the historic trade routes, okay. um, and then the the game, the um, trading game will be so that there well. is that's the interactive um, element that you that's were talking that's about. That's one right? of the interactive elements. Okay. There's going to be um, multiple ones. That is the the shot of the um, longhouse. Um, so again, in the longhouse, it will give a complete understanding of how early people lived in these dwellings, a um, okay. lot of hands-on um, fun things for to explore. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at some little hidden buttons um, that people can, you know, hopefully find and, and uh, discover little things in there. Okay. Um, and there again is the overview. Um, you see the on the left side there's the blue line mm -hmm. that is like a river so that's going to kind of be we're still going to be mazes we you know it used to be a house and mm -hmm. um, so we'll be able to tell people to follow the river to the elevator or okay. to the apostles clock and does that represent uh, the fox river then correct okay yeah All right. that's why it's people of the waters it's you know okay. how did this um, area form um, over time and what brought people here, what were the resources okay. and how did they live off of them. All right. Do we have uh, yeah. another graphic at all or is um, that it? I think this is it. You okay. can see the archaeology um, dig site on the, oh, sure. the back side of the yep. longhouse. So again, it'll kind of look like the, um, the back end of the longhouse mm -hmm. um, okay. was exposed and so that's what they got down below. Sure. Um, this is our Deck the Halls. It opens November 19th. Um, we'll run through December 31st. Okay. And um, the beauty of this, this is our one way to give back to the community. Um, so we offer free admission to hmm. children um, under age 18, um, 18 and up, 350 um, per okay. person. Anything so. for seniors or no? Um, that's a discount from the senior rate as well. So, okay. Okay. Um, we've uh, just 
slashed it down. Normally, 350 is the child rate. Okay. So we're extending the child rate to all adults um, through uh, for the entire exhibit. And again, that Deck the Halls exhibit uh, runs from 1119 until the end of the year, uh, December 31st. Yep. And uh, the Deck the Halls, while it kicks off officially on the 19th, the Deck the Halls um, event, mm -hmm. which is separate, yeah, yeah. Uh, is on November 17th from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Yep. Um, at the museum, and it's $15. Yep. So um, we've got some traveling exhibits, or mm -hmm. you've had some traveling we've exhibits. We've had quite a few, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the most recent one that I recall was uh, Geniuses of Oshkosh or yes. something like that. Yep, that one Ta just closed, yep. yeah. What was that, who was involved in that? Uh, what geniuses um, did we have? We had quite a few from town. There was a um, photographer, Beatrice Tunnison. Um, she is credited as being the first photographer to introduce live models in advertising. Really? Um, prior to hmm. that, it was all illustrations. All ads were, sure. you know, hand-drawn illustrations. And she um, was a portrait photographer mm -hmm. and then she started um, hiring models and selling her photos okay. um, to different companies that then use them um, for advertising. Huh, interesting. So yeah, that's pretty cool. How long did that exhibit run, Carla? Um, it opened in July, um, the, right after 4th of July and it ran through October 16th. Okay. So about two and a half months, yeah, sort of. Yeah. Is is that generally the length of time that you run a traveling exhibit, yeah. or it is? Most okay. of them are re relatively three months. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, one thing I did want to talk about too here. Um, you know, we've got about four or five minutes left. Mm -hmm. um, you recently held the Night Whispers event, yeah. and um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what that was and mm -hmm. how it went. Because, it, well, you tell us what it was yeah, involved. Yeah. Night Whispers involved. is a fun event that we um, do in the month of October. Um, and the museum is all about sharing stories, you know, preserving the history of this area. Um, the newspapers were quite graphic and detailed in um, different events around town. Um, this uh, Oshkosh used to be the hub of spiritual spiritualism. Um, so there were a lot of reported hauntings, ghost sightings um, here in this region. So we took those stories from the newspapers and in a dramatic fashion of appearing ghosts, um, pre-recorded um, ghosts, um, they tell the story from a first person point of view. Um, so some are fun, some are buildings that still exist, and to this day, people may still claim that they're haunted. Others, the ghost himself was able to um, discount that, okay, it was just not even close to a ghost. Mm -hmm. um, it was just uh, staying out at the taverns too late. <laughs> <laughs> Very but, good. Well, we can yeah. understand that, too, I but suppose. But we walk you through the museum at, at night, um, limited lighting, um, which in its... I get freaked out in that museum at night, <laughs> even without, even with lights on. Um, so it does have a little bit of a creep factor just for that matter. Sure. But it's more sharing some of these historic stories. Sure. Many of them are um, people had said, hey, I remember that story growing up. And now to basically get the rest of the story or the full story of what really happened. Sure. Um, um, kind of cool. Do you do that? How, how long do you do that? Um, this year we held it for 13 nights in 13 nights, October. Okay. Um, it's, it's kind of up in the air if we're going to be able to hold it next year. Um, right now we're leaning to having to take maybe a year off um, because it's we'll be opening people of the waters. We're going to have so many activities going on for that. Um, sure. And the museum has to somewhat transform um, to put sure. to um, set the stages for the different sure. ghost stories. Sure. Um, so we're not sure if we're going to be able to do it in 2017. We also are looking to do um, some additional renovations um, in the museum, some of which would affect the second floor, which is half of the Night mm -hmm. Whispers tour. Um, 
so we don't know if logistically if we'll be able to sure. get people through the museum sure. and hold it. So. You know, some people feel that the museum itself is haunted. Mm -hmm. um, is there? Tell us the story behind that and why people may feel that. Um, I think some people feel, um, again, there's stories that somebody died there, that um, maybe it's servants that were there. Um, nobody died in the house. There was um, a couple of funerals held in the home, one okay. of them being Mrs. Sawyer. Um, she died in Georgia, but they um, came back and mm -hmm. held her funeral at the home. Um, but nobody really lived there very long. Yeah. Um, so most of the stories are actually related to objects in our collections that mm. we know of. Um, we've you know never really been able to prove or, or disprove, for that matter, um, the what's being said as being the haunting. But um, I've heard from several people that have a long history with the place. Um, there's just the unexplained. Let's yeah. just leave it at that. Yeah. Um, you know, I have a active imagination, so <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of. I, I tend to blow things out sure, a little bit sure. when I hear noises, but usually I can trace it back to, oh, it's the furnace or this sure. or that. You know? Even our own homes, you oh, know, yes. you can hear weird noises and yeah. think, what is that? Yeah, you know, yeah. when you're first brand new into the into the house. Yeah. And then after a while, you just kind of get used to it, yeah, you know, yeah. and it doesn't necessarily have anything um, mysterious about it. Exactly. <laughs> it's so, a sump pump making noise. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that's kind of what it is. There's still all the old venting, sound travels like you wouldn't believe. Somebody could be talking in the basement, and I'll be on second floor and think they're talking next to me because of how it carries sure, through yeah. the old venting. Sure. So. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that are putting something into an experience they maybe had, but like I said, we've never proved or disproved what it is. So um, it's up to everyone's own, to, imagination it's up to your own imagination and belief, right? Yeah. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for being here, Carla. Well, thank you I've so really much enjoyed for it, me. and yeah. I'm going to make it a point to get back to the museum. You do like that, I said, especially after we open uh, People of the People Waters. Of the now, waters, yeah. February we're opening a, a no, traveling exhibit, um, The World of Jan Brett. Um, that'll be okay. just a beautiful um, display of her original artwork. Um, she's a, a children's author and illustrator, and so the all of the original paintings that make it into her books, um, she makes a full painting of it beforehand. Mm -hmm. And so those will be on display um, February 4th through um, May 14th. And okay. on May 13th, Good. Jan is coming um, to make an appearance. Oh, great. She's doing a book talk. Great. And we'll have a book signing event in the afternoon. So, okay. yeah, people will get to meet her. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, very good. Wonderful. Well, visit uh, the museum's website. Um, it would be, again, oshkoshmuseum.org. And better yet, go visit the museum. Thanks again. Just sit tight. Thank you. We're going to take a real short break. We'll be right back. And that's the office. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, those are my territories. Uh-huh. Think being a big brother means taking time out of your schedule to tutor a kid in algebra? Think again. To learn more about becoming a big brother or big sister, call 1-888-412-BIGS. It's not a charity. It's more than a charity. It's about helping people we live with. It's about being the type of person that the six-year-old version of ourselves wanted us to be. It's about community and looking out for one another. It's about money, yes, but it's so much more than money. It's about friendship and common values. It's about opening doors when others are slammed shut. It's about giving kids a place to be kids and growing up knowing they live in a community that cares about them. It's about making sure that everyone gets to see the dentist because we want to make sure that they have every last tooth in those smiles. Ultimately, that's it. It's about the smiles. Old smiles and new smiles. It's about us. All of us. 
Our community, living united. Because great things happen when we live united. Will you join us? And welcome back to the second half of Ayan Oshkosh. Uh, very pleased to welcome to this segment our guests. Um, to my left is uh, someone who's been on the show a number of times in the past, Lisa Voss. She is the head of library development at the Oshkosh Public Library. And to my right is someone who's making her first visit here, um, and we're very happy that she's here. Marie Bowman, um, you are head of Children's and Family Outreach Services at the Oshkosh Public Library. That's correct. That is a huge title. You must find a way to fit it on a business card, though. So. That's my job. <laughs> yeah. So thanks, guys, for being here. Appreciate it very much. And we've got some books and we've got some um, trinkets <laughs> at the end of the table here. And we will be explaining everything. And we also have... Oh, special um, guest. Yes, a special guest. It needs no introduction. <laughs> That's needs right. needs no introduction. You know, um, I just got back from a cruise. And on the cruise, they made a big deal out of Dr. Seuss, and they had a big, huge Dr. Seuss really? um, who did a lot of things with kids and paraded them around part of the ship and everything. Huh. It was fantastic. I was Everyone trying to loves the cat in the hat and Dr. Seuss. Yep, just yep. Keeps so, on going. So, yeah. Um, and he was dressed exactly like this. So, <laughs> there you go. I, I didn't get my picture taken with him, but now at least we will have this on on tape <laughs> uh, for posterity reasons. So, um, so what what is he representing? Since oh, I have him here, let's um, sure. let's talk about him. Okay, um, well, the holidays are coming soon. I know it seems like it might be too early, but the downtown um, area-wide Grinchmas Fest is coming up next week, Saturday the 19th, and we are having a Grinchmas celebration as part of that at the library, so there's going to be a lot of activities going on, readings of the story, um, it's the Whoville Holiday mm -hmm. is Thank the you. overall downtown, mm -hmm. um, and our part of it is the Grinchmas celebration. And uh, so it's a full day of fun for families and anybody who um, is interested in enjoying the holidays with the Grinch. Sure. It, it almost looks like I'm trying to strangle him here. But <laughs> I know. <laughs> he has a very he small He's a little he floppy. He hasn't turned blue yet. But <laughs> um, <laughs> he's, still, he's still breathing and he still That's has right. a pulse. So. And then uh, for many years we've also had celebrated Dr. <clears throat> Seuss's birthday at the beginning of March and we'll be Just doing that again. Me. Oh, sorry. That's uh, um, I never know for sure where to look. So um, yes, yes. Look at, just pretend the, the cat cameras are here. You know, the celebration look will keep him. on going. Then he's a big hit at the library. Okay. Well, I'm going to give him back okay. to you so that I can uh, oh. have my hands free. Prepare Thank him. Much. So that's for the um, celebration. So that's the Grinchmas Christmas celebration. Mm -hmm. Right. It's right? part as okay. I said, it's part of the Whoville holiday on November okay. 19th. So come okay. downtown. There's going to be horse and carriage rides in the square. There's going to be um, a sing-along, a costume contest at the library, and then a costume mm -hmm. parade in the square. So just, like I said, a full day of activities. Okay. So come visit us. And the day before that, uh, you've got something going on called the Great Reads of 2016. Um, so what's uh, what are you doing there? Well, we have uh, one of our librarians has been looking at a, a variety of different sources, uh, bestsellers, uh, books that um, our staff has found to be particularly interesting. So it'll be a good mix of things that people may be familiar with that were very popular during 2016 and some um, finds that maybe you aren't aware of. Um, he's going to include um, nonfiction, which some people, you know, there are people who just read novels, but there have been some really interesting nonfiction books that have come out mm -hmm. in the last year. Um, he's going to um, have we like to have some snacks for people, and we want to hear from people in the audience as well. What were their favorite books? Uh, we've been interacting more with book clubs. We have sets of books that book clubs can check out. Yep. And um, so we're hoping some of those folks come and talk about what did they love, or I had a woman tell me a book that she just really couldn't stand that she had oh. to read for her book club. You know, 
now save <coughs> others from that fate. Um, I think so, we've all had some of those. Uh, yes. You know, I'm and people reading love one. to talk about books, and yeah. so we want to mm -hmm. bring them together to do yeah. that at the library. Yeah, I'm reading one right now, and I can't even tell you the title of it because I am so disinterested in the book. Okay. It's just taking so long <laughs> to get into it. Well, you should come on the 18th and share that and save <laughs> uh -huh. others from reading that save book. Save <laughs> others, yes, that would be a good idea. Um, you know, talking about reading books as kids and adults, mm -hmm. Um, I think I've conveyed to you, Lisa, in the past that one of my favorite things as a kid was going to the bookmobile. And, of course, we don't have that anymore. No, we don't. But <laughs> I enjoyed going to the bookmobile and um, in summer, you know, reading books. And um, I'm trying to think what his name was. Was it Neil Hintz? The last name was Hintz, H I N T Z E. The but he drove the bookmobile. Oh, oh okay. okay, not an I author. You were an author. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. He drove the bookmobile, and when I'd come back with books that I'd finished, you know, I'd get a little, it, it, kind of a circle or an oblong shape, to complete a bookworm. Sure, thing. Oh, sure. And it was so cool. Sure. And I really, you know, that inspired me. I mean, I've always loved to read anyway, mm -hmm. but that inspired me to read a lot of books through my summer vacation as, as a child. That's a great story. Well, it is. Mm -hmm. And we have something you could talk a little bit about high flyers that. Well, we have several things that we do similar. throughout the year. See, uh, at one time, <laughs> or for the last however many years, a decade or so, it's been a big push for summer reading. But now libraries in Wisconsin are looking at trying to offer more literacy opportunities throughout the year. So um, something that we have for early literacy, um, kids in preschool or younger, is called a High Flyers program. Mm -hmm. And it's something they can do at home. Oh. It complements another program that we have. It's a special story time for kids who are preschool age, uh, on, the, on the younger end of preschool, mm -hmm. um, called High Hopes. And we focus on talking, writing, reading, singing, and playing, and doing all of those things together help kids to get ready for formal reading and writing. Okay. Um, high Flyers is something they can do at home. It's similar to 1,000 books before kindergarten. People might be familiar with that concept, but we emphasize that it's not just reading with your kids, but having conversations and building vocabulary skills. Um, having imaginary play where you're learning how to substitute, um, which will lead to substituting a letter for a sound or a word for something that you say. Mm -hmm. um, and this is all packaged up very in a very colorful yep. way, kind of a kit for the child sure. so that they can, you know, that concept of logging your progress, I think, is something that makes it Mm -hmm. I guess more real for for the family and sure. especially for the child sure. to say, look yeah. what I did. Yep. And um, it's yep. just like and you every said, every those skills. time mm -hmm. that they come and check in with us, they get to choose something out of a box that we have that relates to one of the early literacy skills, so they can keep on going at home. Um, another opportunity we have that's similar, like your bookworm that you talked about, um, it's called the Wild Winter Read Off. Okay. And they get a bingo card, and they can start that during um, holiday break. I know it seems like it's way far away, but it's going to be here. Before I want to let it. people know. So <laughs> yeah, it starts during winter break from the public schools and goes through the third week of January. Okay. And they can complete a bingo card with different types of books to read, so okay. that they get an opportunity to browse around, um, try to find some things that they don't always go to, like the mm -hmm. same author or the same series or the same type of book, maybe mix it up a little bit, Sure, um, have some fun with it. Do they, what do they get, um, besides a greater increased knowledge, of course, what do they get? Um, well, in addition to that, club? we have um, brand new books at all different reading levels, so they can choose one of those. Okay. And um, this year, we also have, you just had Carla on from yes. the Oshkosh Public Museum. They are going to be having a Jan Brett um, show there. She probably talked she about did. it. Yep, the she art of Jan it. Brett. And so in January, while we're leading up to that exhibit that starts in February, um, we can give out free passes for that exhibit. So in addition okay. to a new book, they'll get a pass for the Jan Brett exhibit. Okay, very so. good. That's very cool. Um, I, I want to 
you know, go through some of the other the, some of these other events that you guys have coming up. Mm -hmm. But I also want to save a little bit of time just to talk about the library in general. Um, so on November 22nd, you've got the JFK assassination, 53 years of controversy, mm -hmm. and that's something you're doing in partnership with the Winnebago County Historical and Archaeological Society. Tell me about that. That's right. They, um, they actually set up the program and are bringing in um, a man named Conrad Pete Bates, who is a former staff investigator on the White House Select Committee. So he oh. brings a real interesting perspective and sort of frontline knowledge mm -hmm. on, on this topic. Um, the JFK assassination, people are still fascinated with that. It was a, a momentous event in our It's in a dark American day in history. our history. It was. It really was. Um, so uh, he wants people to bring their questions and to have kind okay. of an, you know, do his presentation, but have kind of an open discussion about it. Okay. And um, so we're, we're very excited to have the his Historical Society bringing mm -hmm. that to the library. Now, mm -hmm. for some of these events, guys, are there charges for these things? Never. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. They're free. They're free okay. events. So and they can learn more. Um, you know, you can learn more about any of these events at the library's uh, website um, and when I see press releases I try to put them on my website as well for the uh, library so in fact I just got one today and it's not on our list of things to talk about but um, I'm trying to think of what it was it's I, I didn't have time to put it on the website but I will um, so anyway uh, remembering Pearl Harbor with Dick Campbell that's coming up on December 1st Right, Dick, um, a lot of people have seen Dick's presentations. He goes to a lot of service clubs. He brings them to the library. This is the first time that he's doing this one, so we're kind of excited to be his debut. Mm -hmm. um, and Dick is just a tireless researcher, and he, um, if when he does a program, um, he brings in all these different perspectives and different resources, and you really do learn a lot listening sure, to him sure. speak. So. That's something on Thursday, December 1st. We're hoping that a lot of people will come for that. Okay, and I just remembered what the press release was. It, it was about the, the Grinch celebration. It was, yes. So, yeah. so <laughs> we've already talked about that. That's what I thought. <laughs> but I was I, hoping there wasn't another one that I wasn't aware of. <laughs> Especially it since happens. your name's on them That's when right. they come out. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> so, um, so I'll be getting that on the website. That's then on awesome. December 6th, um, I, I don't know how to pronounce this. Um, is it... Miss Quacky? That sounds good. I, my joke all week has been that okay, I don't need not, to know how to okay. pronounce it. I just need to know how to spell it. And then okay. you called. <laughs> uh, that changed. Miss Quacky, Fox Indian Settlements. And this is in partnership with the um, Butamore Historic Preservation Society. Right. And um, Jeffrey Bame, who is a PhD from UW Oshkosh, is going to come and talk about um, the, the Fox Indians and their... I have to admit I'm not well versed in this. I need to go to the program, but um, the, their arrival in Wisconsin and their relocation to this area, or this region, I should say, and they had shifting habitation patterns where they would move. It's kind of like summer habitat, winter habitat, okay. and he's going to go into some detail about that. And I think some of the archaeological find evidence of these patterns and, and the way that these people lived. So okay. it should be interesting. Well, also in December, of course, we have Christmas and the holidays and all That's of that. Right. So that brings us to um, a lot of the different holiday events that you guys have going on at the library. Who wants to cover those? Well, well the, de mostly... the decorating with Grinchmas, mm -hmm. um, we do a lot of decorating. Um, Marie's, some of Marie's staff members have done just a fabulous job of, you know, these big Dr. Seuss style sorts of packages and things. So mm -hmm. we have that decorated for Grinchmas, and then you can talk a little. Yeah. We, people come and take photos under the dome, and it's really kind of nice even after the Grinchmas celebration. That's the big one. I'm glad you mentioned that because it's a great photo opportunity for families. Um, beyond that, we have a couple of Santa story times, and we hire someone to come in. Um, he's Santa? a local. Yeah, Santa. That's right. It's Santa. Um, he, he, and he he's, he's more than a, a storyteller. Well, he sure does tell stories. It is. It is. But, awesome. you know, he also does a, a little bit of magic and a little bit of talking about what Christmas means, and kids have a chance to sit on his lap and get a picture. So. Um, we have a morning and an evening time for those, okay. December 12th, a 10 a.m. or a 6 a.m. Um, you can see him. Um, we have 
three sessions of DIY ornaments. If you don't know what DIY is, it's a do-it-yourself. And we've been doing a lot more of those programs for all ages um, more recently as well. Um, and the ornaments are um, very well planned out and they give kids a chance to express their um, individual artistic abilities and ideas. It's not just a you know, put this pom-pom on this stick mm -hmm. and there it is, but um, there's a little bit of individual um, opportunity in there for okay. expression. All right. Let's so see. this is just for kids then, this uh, Those DIY two are. ornaments and uh, the story time, um, of oh, course. Before Santa story times, the Madrigal Singers from Oshkosh. Well, we're still waiting. <laughs> we're oh. hoping to have Excuse a group of Madrigal <laughs> Singers okay. um, come. They performed before Santa story time. We had Oshkosh mm -hmm. North. We've had the different schools come. Okay. And they're wonderful. Depending on their availability. So, okay. and Hopefully they'll be there. It's a great way to get into the holiday spirit. And sure. the little kids are just in awe of these yeah. older oh, kids I'm and sure. their costumes and, yeah. and the music. Yeah. And so okay. it really adds to yeah. the event. Well, and then speaking of singing, there's an Oshkosh Youth Choir concert and a handbell concert. That's right. The Oshkosh December. Youth Choir has been performing at the library, I don't know how many years since before I started working there, so at least probably a decade. Um, and they come and bring usually the upper level aria choir. And okay. so they're going to be there on December 3rd okay. is a Saturday, I believe. And um, that's a free concert. And it's, you know, a lot of the families of the choir members mm -hmm. come, but we mm -hmm. have a lot of folks that also come to that from the public and they're welcome. Okay. A winter break for kids. We talked a little bit about what's going oh. on during the holiday yes. break and up until I think you said the third week in January. Mm -hmm. But here's one that's that's kind of interesting. Um, Elephant and Piggy book abrasion. Yes. Um, and noon Year's Eve party. And I'm not drunk. It's <laughs> noon Year's Eve party. I'll, I'll start with it. that. So it is on New Year's Eve on the 31st. Okay. And there is music and a chance to dance. There are some stories. There's games. And at noon, I know last year they did a big balloon drop. I don't know what our um, children's staff member has planned for that this year, but it's sure to be exciting. Okay. Um, and that's for all ages. Okay. There's also, oh, as you mentioned, the elephant and piggy book abrasion, we're calling it. So mm -hmm. if you've had young kids in the last decade, maybe more, I don't know how long Mo Williams has been around. I should know it off the top of my head. <laughs> but if you know about don't let the pigeon drive the bus, okay. well, that's Mo Willems. And he's the one who's written um, the elephant and piggy books as well. So if I could just open one of these up to give you the, the style of the books. It's in a graphic novel style. Some okay. people call it comic books, but okay. it really is a graphic novel. It's a story within uh, a book. And these two are hilarious. Kids can't get enough of them. They're, okay. They just roll, how, what is it? Roll on the floor laughing is yes. <laughs> R-O-F, <-S> oh, <laughs> I can't get I it. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's gonna be the theme of the elephant and piggy book abrasion. So, okay. um, and Young these are kids, books especially. By Mo Willems. Mo Willems. It's yep. M O and Willems With is W I L L. It's w I L L E M S. Okay, you're yes. aware of him. Well, no, he's I got... took it right off there. <laughs> good memory. But he's got other good ones out, too, but this is one of the big ones. It's just about as big as Pete the Cat. Maybe okay. somebody would argue bigger. And I you have know heard who of, that is. I have heard of okay. Mo Willems, though, but I didn't really know for sure how to spell it, so I took it off there. There you go. <laughs> okay. Use your resources. That's right. Oh, and then, of course, I mentioned um, the Wild Winter Read-Off bingo card um, at-home book challenge starts, reading challenge starts that week as well. You can start it right away. Okay. A lot of kids like to Wonderful. do Wonderful. There's so much stuff that you guys have going on. Uh, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's one of the things I want to talk a bit about the library. You know, we're, we're in an age, and we continue to move further and further into this um, period or this way of life where people are downloading ebooks like crazy. Um, I, I don't know how you track or if you track how many people come to the library. I know you can track how many books are being checked out, mm -hmm. but you know, the library has resources where you can just go in on a 
evening or Saturday afternoon and right. sit down and read the newspapers or read magazines or whatever and you don't have to you know check anything out with a library card or anything right. mm -hmm. so how does the library continue to make itself relevant and stay in business if you will because it is a business a nonprofit business right. yes yeah. but you're mm -hmm. still in business how do you do that when we have so many people <laughs> I can chip Ash in the book, she right? that one in. Off to me. <laughs> when, when so many people are reading books that they're downloading off the internet and I'm one of those who does that I, I download books well you can um, download books from us <clears throat> excuse okay. me from our website uh, we mm -hmm. have what's called we're part of a statewide consortium called the Wisconsin Digital Library and we have been putting a considerable amount of budget money into ebooks over the last few years. Um, and we reached a point, I believe, where physical books being checked out and ebooks being checked out were almost equal. Am I, I think I'm correct in that. I, um, the, I can't say without looking. I think we're still checking out more physical materials at this the time. E but that's rising sort of, every year. But, and, and it's, it's, there are various sources out there that are saying it's sort of plateaued, but really there are a lot of people who do both. Mm -hmm. yeah. say, I'm one I of travel. them. I'm yeah. one of them. Yeah. I travel. I don't want to carry six books with me. I can download those to my mm -hmm. Kindle, to my iPad, whatever. Right. So right. you can do that through the library and we are happy to help. One of the things we offer is the assistance to learn how to do it. Some sure. people, sure. you know, want to do this and they have no idea how to get started. So you can always come to the library or call the mm -hmm. library, go on our <coughs> website, <coughs> and see how to do that. Um, some of the other things that we're doing, we're doing different types of things. Like everyone else, like every other organization, we need to evolve. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that we have in our strategic plan um, talk about you know, being a place, we've always been a place for lifelong learning, but we wanna be a, a place that inspires um, exploration and discovery. And that, mm -hmm. that ex is why we have some of the DIY things that we do. People want to have an experience you know, you can sit at home and look at a million recipes or a million things on Pinterest and sit mm -hmm. there and, oh, I like to look at these, but, you know, it's kind of like I, I watched this old house. Have I built anything? No. <laughs> I do enjoy watching it. Uh, maybe if I got together with a group of people who had a similar interest, I would actually do some of those things. Well, those are some of the things that we're offering. You can come together with people who have some similar interests to you. Um, and do some things that you're not going to do on your own. Maybe have access some, to some technology. Sure. Um, maybe Marie can talk a little bit about our STEAM programs. Oh, um, there's for that kids. too. But um, the adult <clears throat> programs in particular, though, they've had a lot of you know what we like to refer to as community experts come in and share their knowledge. Like uh, we just recently had a home brewing program right. that turned to be standing room only after wow. yeah everything was filled up, and um, there's you know, area groups that um, get together and talk about the history of it, you know, so mm -hmm. it wasn't just some suggestions on how to home brew, but also the history of brewing right. in Oshkosh. Yeah. So it's very enriching. Sure. Um, well, a lot of good information. Well, that's getting to be such a big thing. Yeah. Know, home brewing. Although there's sure. one example. We had, a, a, I believe it was a florist come in and talk about arranging flowers. We've had people talk about knitting and get together and knit. And, and they we're come just and they actually do these things. So okay. then with a right. person who knows how to, you know, can offer mm -hmm. some assistance and get them started. Yeah. And, you know, that's yeah. a, a lot of our director always says, we plant seeds. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a lot of what we do. And, you know, it's a place where fe people feel comfortable and coming in and saying, I don't know how to do this. Can you help me? Can you direct me? And it used to always be, you know, Jeff always says, you, that help used to always be a book. Mm -hmm. Well, now maybe it's an online database or resource maybe it's a person mm -hmm. that we can bring in mm -hmm. to do a program so that's kind of the direction that questions. we're going in yeah. okay. and, right. and still being that community connector sure to sure. show you what's out here are all the different places you can get this knowledge mm -hmm. um, that's a role that we still really I think can, can play sure. mm -hmm. well I know that you know certainly one of the advantages to downloading material um, from the library as opposed to Amazon or any of the other sources that are out there is that in many cases, I'm not going to say in all, but in a lot of cases, you have to pay for those things. Even if it's a buck mm -hmm. 99 or sure. 99 cents, you're paying for something. There mm -hmm. are resources that will offer some books for free, but it's limited. Um, through the library, 
Mm -hmm. You can download it. You know, you're you're right. borrowing it. So right. there's no cost. And <clears throat> you guys also have videos that can be checked out um, that I don't think you can go to too many places and um, get videos for free. So, yep. Yep. Um, you know, you DVDs, guys, DVDs, just to clarify. Oh, so we you don't, don't have, have the like, videos. No, I we had to think we finally anymore. You think got rid of the last yeah. VHSs. Yeah. All right. But. Well, see, I still think, but I still think of a video, even if it's on DVD. Yeah, I think a lot of people do. It, you know, I mean, it's. I probably should get up to date with the technology. Well, I just terms, want to make sure that the audience understands yes, that we're talking about now, that. But here we go. Um, a lot of people no longer have DVD players. They've got Blu-ray players. Do you guys offer these things on Blu-ray, or is it you strictly? Can, we don't have Blu-ray. We make different f decisions about how much of a collection are we going to build around sure. different formats. formats yeah. But you can... Um, I'm sure you can get them from our other Winifox libraries. Yeah, That's okay. one of the things about the library as well. You're not, when you have an Oshkosh Public Library card, you're actually hooked into 30 libraries mm -hmm. um, in the Winifox system. And so if you, we don't have something or ours are all gone and you see that Nina has something, it gets delivered. Five days a week, the band right. and, comes and five days a week that's an incredible resource that a lot of people, it's sure. kind of behind the scenes, but it's something that people should be aware of mm -hmm. because, you know, it's something that we want to be able to maintain and preserve. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a great service. It's pretty popular, but you're right. A lot of people, I think, aren't aware of that. Aware of so. how it happens and, oh, and who gotcha. does it, gotcha. I guess, yeah. more. They just think it just magically um, appears. Right. Like I, Santa <laughs> delivering gifts. That's right. <laughs> well, it kind of is magical like that. Um, I didn't want to forget to mention something else with um, um, the downloadable books. It's called the Overdrive Audiobook Database. Okay. Well, a couple things I wanted to mention, really. Um, the, the Winifox system, or maybe it's OPL. Sorry about that. Um, the Oshkosh Public Library actually has the most uh, titles available okay. through Overdrive because in addition to having the state collection that we pay into, we also have what's called uh, Advantage Books where we order more copies additional of something or additional titles as well beyond okay. what the state does. So okay. it is an excellent resource. Um, there's many audiobooks as well, okay. not just text. That's audiobooks, a few up. videos, um, it might be useful to people. It's, it, I don't want to promise there's tons of those, but okay. um, I've never been without an audiobook. Mm -hmm. for, for they what seem I can to get really there. be increasing if you in need, popularity. Mm -hmm. if, if you need to put a hold on, a, on an audiobook or a digital book, because they say all of the digital copies are checked out, you know, it's a, right. a thing with the vendor. Um, it never takes long for a hold to get to me. You never have to wait very long. Okay. That's been my experience, and I've used it quite a bit. Okay. All right, good. So um, the STEAM programming that you had oh, mentioned right. a, a few minutes ago, uh, Lisa, um, S-T-E-A-M, and it's all in caps. So I'm yep. assuming it's an acronym for something? It is. Um, okay. A lot of people just go by STEM. The A is the artistic things that you bring, or the arts. Otherwise, it's science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I believe it started because there was... Uh, a real lack of people going into those fields and you know as you mentioned we're going more and more toward that type of thing mm -hmm. now yep. um, so we want to get kids more excited and show them all of the opportunities that there are you don't just have to be a hardcore biologist or mathematician there's sure. a lot of room for people yeah. in those fields um, so some of the things that we've done um, we have a, a program that we started this this fall session called Wonder Lab and it's a mix of um, ideas around technology or math or the sciences and okay. also adding in arts such as, you know, if you're going to talk about what you did, communicating or the way it's designed, mm -hmm. the arts are always in there. So this is an example of something that they made a couple of weeks ago. It's a spectroscope and we used old CDs. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll give a shout out to Melissa Salazar. She's been running <laughs> STEM, um, been running uh, Wonder Lab. And what it does is with the right holes in there and these recycled items, you look through and it breaks up um, the spectrum of the light that's in this room into the different okay. colors. Okay. And she explains how that works to them. Okay. And then they work on it and they get a real 
sense of accomplishment when they're done because she has them do all the steps on their own. There's plenty of time for them to make mistakes, try sure. again. Why didn't it work? What do you think we could do different? So they're learning problem solving, communicating. May I just look through that a moment? Yeah, and I'm hoping it worked for me just now when okay. I looked in there. Right. It should look oh, like yes. a rainbow. It does. And it makes it very tangible for them to be able to yeah. they're creating this, is this fantastic. phenomenon. So on that's their, just one you know, idea. And there's a help. real variety of things. For the winter spring Oops. sessions, there was so much demand for it, and we have registration that we've decided to double the number of sessions sure. so that more kids can be served. Yeah. Um, this is one that I did recently for the um, Oshkosh Science Festival that was here. Okay. Uh, or not just here, but across the state. Sure. And it, one of the yeah. offerings we had in Oshkosh at the library, I called it Juno and Curiosity, and that's the names of um, a couple of, uh, one is uh, an orbiter that is going around Jupiter now. Mm -hmm. It just landed there this July, and another one is um, the Mars rover. Okay. And so we talked a little bit about. Why don't you hold those up? Okay. Because uh, our logo. Thank you. Is kind I don't of, know if you can. Um, we'll get. Uh, look we'll at get, that. Yeah. A little there we bit go. closer. Yep. But this is a really nice example. The the community expert that we had come in was a science teacher, John Ryland from um, West <laughs> High School. I got to get that right. And his son made this awesome duo rover. Rovers can actually move around. Sure. That's why they're rovers. And this orbiter and they talk to each other. Um, oh, went around neat. Mars, you know. And um, we talked to them about, okay, if we're going to Mars, are we just going to plant a flag and leave? No. You know, what are we going to do up there? What are we looking mm -hmm. for? And we talked about how they're looking for life up there and what would it look like if we found life on Mars? You know, what kinds of things do you want to sample? How do you protect your instruments from the harsh um, environment up there. Yeah, whatever elements so there then, may be. Yep. At and Marie's pretty modest. She, she won't mention it herself, but she is a NASA trained yes. librarian. Ah, okay. So this I is not, it. we're not, she's That's not just getting this out of the funnest things I've ever done. I know. So their, um, their outreach and education department, um, NASA's outreach and education department, uh, would go around and have workshops for teachers and other educators. And this particular one about four years ago was called Life on Mars with a question mark. And they gave us all kinds of ideas about how we can, like you say, make it tangible for kids and really engage them in what NASA's been up to. And they have great resources on their page too. Sure. But, um, well, that's great. So there's more to anyway, come because she's. Uh, way so too for much the next training for session of one Wonder program. Labs, my particular sessions are going to probably involve more about space and space okay. exploration. So, All right, there. excellent. Well, we are out of time, but I think we really covered just about <laughs> everything that we wanted to talk about. And okay. um, you know, there's always more stuff happening at the library. There so is. you know, you guys are welcome to come back anytime you want. Hey, um, yeah, and I will put to. that invitation out there and, um, you know, keep sending me the press releases and, you know, let me know anytime you want to come on. So Thank um, you. visit your Oshkosh Public Library, either online or in person, and, um, you know, you won't be disappointed for sure. I want to thank both Lisa and Marie, and I want to thank Carla from earlier. I uh, want to thank the crew. We are short-staffed tonight, but... You couldn't do this without them, so I want to thank them. And most of all, I want to thank you folks at home for tuning in, either on cable access or on YouTube. So thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh. I start talking about the wrong book and then <laughs>